Hi, and welcome to What's Happening at Tri-City Medical Center. I'm Kelly Davis, and I'll be your host for this series made in collaboration with KOCT, North County's channel, and Tri-City Medical Center. Our goal is to keep you informed about health issues, events, and services at your local hospital and provide you with information for a healthy lifestyle. With us is Dr. Adib, a board-certified OBGYN practicing at Tri-City Medical Center after extensive training and experience abroad. She is here to talk about women's health and to answer questions about annual exam exams. Welcome, Dr. Adib. Thank you so much, Kelly, and thanks for having me here. The first thing I want to do, you have such a lovely name, and I didn't want to butcher it. <laughs> Could you please say your full name for us? Sure. I am Tanaz Ebrahimi Adib. Ugh, what a great name. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> so, Dr. Adib, I, um, you know, my mother used to tell me when we're talking about preventive care and gynecological visits, before, way back before I would even see one, she was at telling me as a child some of her, well, what her information she had as a, as a woman growing up in South Carolina. So I always had to take a little bit of a grain of salt with what she said, but she would say things like, pay attention to that area. Uh, uh, make sure that you don't wear underwear when you sleep at night so you can have it breathe. You know, wear, <laughs> shoe, wear socks on your feet to keep yourself warm. Are these just wives' tales? Or are, some, are there something true to this kind of thing? There is definitely some truth to that, Kelly. If women uh, wear tight pantyhoses and tight pants at all times, uh, then the area will be kept moist and warm at all times. Mm -hmm. And warm, moist environment is the best to invite yeast. So mm -hmm. they're more prone to get yeast infections. So that's a very good idea indeed. So okay. your mom was absolutely right. Well, that's, that's good to know. She certainly felt that she was right, so that's good. So how often, now gynecological visits, how often we as women should we be going? At least yearly, if there's no problem. But if there is any problem, the doctor will let the woman know what is the time of the next visit. Mm -hmm. And do women who are done with childbirth or have undergone a hysterectomy, and please for our audience let them know what a hysterectomy is, is does that change for them? Not really. I'm so glad you asked this question, Kelly. A lot of women think if they're done with childbirth or if they have removed their uterus, which is called in medical terminology a hysterectomy, they're done and they don't need any more annual exam. But it's absolutely not true. The first time to start with an OBGYN visit is at least 21 years old or at the first time that um, they become sexually active, whichever comes first. But they need to continue annual visits with GYN doctor. And there are different reasons to that. Number one, if someone has removed their uteruses and they don't have their cervix, maybe they don't need a pap smear in some specific cases, but they still need that annual breast exam and also annual pelvic exam. If someone grows a tumor in their ovary, which the most common age is 50 years old and up, there's no way they would know unless that tumor gains considerable size and doing starting to treat that at that point would be a lot lot less successful um, also women who are done with childbirth for the same reason they definitely need to continue their visits for OBGYN. A lot of ladies, I've had a lot of patients that went through menopause and for some reason for a disease or underlying pathology they bled a little bit and they thought it's normal or they told me, oh doctor, I got young again and I had another period. My neighbor said that's okay, but not, that might be the first sign of cancer. So we need to be very vigilant on that. Mm. So uh, when I said yearly, that means that everything is good. There's no changes or no problems. But as soon as women notice any changes, any discharge, any unusual bleeding that is not supposed to be there, they need to definitely make an appointment and come to us. Wow, that's, that's definitely fascinating. And also with women who practice abstinence, for example, 
they should also be going just because you're not having, this is not something just because mm -hmm. you're having sex or not having sex. Is that true? Very true, Kelly. Uh, women who um, are abstinent or women uh, who have sex with the same sex still need to do their annual visits because other things might be going on, as I said, in their tubes, in their ovaries, or in their breasts. And um, women who already gone through menopause, what about, what about those, that category as well? Right, um, the common age to start getting cancers is about 50 years old on average, and that's around the time that women go into menopause. Um, we um, know that pap smears are the best way to screen cervical cancers. Mm -hmm. So even though they're, of course, done with their childbirth, they still need to come yearly to the doctor to get their pap smears done and also to get a pelvic exam to check other organs beside their cervix. So well, let's change gears just slightly since we're talking about these visits and a lot of women may come. Yes, they might have maybe, S, I think call it STIs now mm -hmm. or, or I don't know if the proper, or STDs and just checking up. But what about the women who might think that they're infertile and what, what does that mean, infertility? What is that? Very good question, Kelly. I've had ladies who came to me for different reasons like pelvic pain, unusual bleeding, and they didn't have the courage or they were embarrassed to tell me, hey doc, mm -hmm. I'm trying to get pregnant for three years now and it's not happening. They just come to me for other reasons. But by definition, infertility is when people have unprotected sex for a year and pregnancy is not happening. Okay. And is there an age range that a woman should be concerned about, you know, can I get pregnant, future pregnant? Mm -hmm. you know? mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a known fact that after 35 years old, Kelly, the uh, fertility levels or fertility capability reduces gradually. But in the modern world, since a lot of women are into getting professionals first and they focus on their career first, I've had a lot of ladies who started thinking about um, their family or childbearing in their like early 40s and it's still doable mm -hmm. if they come to a doctor beforehand and make sure they're getting checked and they get whatever that is needed beforehand. Um, also, uh, the one year time that I said, uh, that applies to people that are below 35 years old. If a woman is above 35 and they tried for six months and it did not happen because the clock has already started ticking for them, um, they need to come to GYN. We have a, uh, about a minute. Uh, uh, what can be done for infertility? I hear about this in vitro fertilization. What is that the mm -hmm. only thing? Is there other things? Yeah, actually a lot of doctors, as soon as they hear that from their patient, they automatically refer them to IVF which is hundreds of tens of thousands of dollars, which is normally not covered by insurance. Mm. Lots of invasive procedures and lots of hormones loads on women. But before doing that as a last resort, there are lots of things that can be done by the doctor, like a whole workup to find out the underlying reason. And sometimes the underlying reason is so simple that it can be corrected and the woman can conceive on her own. Thank you, Dr. Adib. And if you want further information on women's health at Tri-City Medical Center, please visit tricitymed.org. Tri-City Medical Center, a leader in advanced healthcare close to home. Meet former NFL and three-time Pro Bowl player, Willie Buchanan. He retired after a decade in the NFL, but not before it took a huge toll on his knees. I was in so much pain that eventually I wasn't able to do a lot of activities. Willie realized that surgery was probably his last option and researched extensively who he would trust. He chose Tri-City Medical Center's Dr. Hel Gogger, who performs about 200 total knee replacements a year. Willie was experiencing severe pain from bone on bone wear in both knees. After consulting with him, his best option was knee replacement surgery. I knew this surgery could give him back his quality of life. The surgery took less than an hour. I'm now pain-free and back to my daily activities, which include doing what I love best, playing golf. I'm so thankful for Tri-City Medical Center. 
and their doctors. Willie is just one example of how Tri-City Medical Center is dedicated to getting you back to doing what you love. Tri-City Medical Center, advanced health care for you. Hi, welcome to what's happening at Tri-City Medical Center. With us is Dr. Adib, a board certified OBGYN practicing at Tri-City Medical Center. She is here today to talk about women's health and urinary incontinence. Welcome, Dr. Adib. Thank you, Kelly, <laughs> and thank you for having me here today. Well, first question, what are some of the reasons for a, a leaky, for leaky urine? Mm -hmm. Yeah, there are multiple factors into play. And uh, the first and foremost um, factor is aging, of course. The second one is childbearing. Uh, people who had many kids and larger kids and pushed longer time for the delivery, they're more prone to have a sagged bladder and leaking of the urine. Also, genetics plays a role, a very, plays a very important role. I've had ladies who had only one kid with three degrees of sagged bladder versus another woman with a better and a stronger connective tissue genetically, and um, they have one degree of sagging of the bladder. So these are the main factors into play. But of course, there are some underlying medical conditions for the patient that make them more prone to get a sagged bladder and leak urine. Like if someone has COPD and they cough all the time, with, e with each coughing, they sag down more and they kind of make it more prone to happen faster. It just accelerates it. It mm. happens anyways with age. We are upright situation in like about 16 days of, um, 16 hours uh, in 24 hours. So gravity pulls it down all the time as we age. But another predisposing factor is um, when people are overweight, obesity itself and overweight pushes it down more than it would normally uh, get by aging. So, um, so older women are more, are, are more prone because of, I don't want to say gravity, but just because of what, why are they more prone again? Let me just Because that. just the time passes okay. and by, as time passes, as we age, our connective tissue sags down anyways. And also the gravity works on our organs mm -hmm. constantly when we are in the upright position. So as we age more, there are more hours that our um, pelvic contents are exposed to that gravity. Now, I heard, this is, goes back to all these things you hear and then you get on the internet, is it true, is it true? <laughs> I heard that you can use sit-ups or, or they encourage you to do sit-ups as a woman to help not just, your, I guess, your back to help carry you, but also help with your bladder. Is that, is that true? Um, I believe you mean uh, Kegel exercises, Kelly. And if they, um, the degree of sagging or leakage is um, minimal to moderate, Kegel exercises may work. So the way uh, women can do Kegel exercises is to constrict their inner muscles. And just imagine if someone is um, sitting on a toilet and voiding and the exact muscles that will stop the voiding are the exact muscles that women need to contract to do Kegel exercises. So they can do 30 sets in the morning, 30 sets in the afternoon, mm -hmm. hold it like two or three minutes, release one second, hold it again three more seconds and release. So 30 sets and it may work in, as I said, mild, but higher degrees of sagging or leakage, probably Kegel will not work. So, and it and you're saying it may also it helps with um, uh, urine leaking, but it I guess it would help strengthen as well the vaginal Absolutely. walls as well. Absolutely, it uh -huh. kinds of tones up all the pelvic muscles, and it's helpful in general. Okay, and so what you, you this was one of the things that can be done certainly. What else can be done to help with this urine uh, leakage? Mm -hmm. um, the first thing would be to avoid all the uh, conditions that will accelerate the process. Like um, if someone uh, has a job that is uh, involved with heavy lifting all day long, mm -hmm. they're more prone. So if there is a way to do that less often, I know it's easier said than done, but that will help 
to have this problem later in life rather than sooner. Also, constipation is another corrected, correctable factor if their people are constipated. And just the small stool softeners will delay this process. Of course, we can't do anything for aging, but there are two different kinds of, actually there are five um, different types of uh, urinary incontinence to be more exact, but the most two commons that most of women uh, get it is stress urinary incontinence, which happens with laughing, um, jumping, uh, or like change of um, position. Uh, and the other one is urge incontinence. That has nothing to do with positional cough, laugh, sneeze thing. That's just an urge to pee. And uh, women may even have accidents if they don't get to the bathroom soon enough. So for each underlying reason, there's a different treatment. Like for urge, uh, Kegel exercises will not really work. So a doctor will exactly determine after interviewing and examining the patient what type of incontinence is involved and what is the best way to deal with it. So something like uh, this, the, this bladder sling or, uh, or a mesh mm -hmm. in treatment, are those, what are those things and are those kinds of things the, the items that you would use for a more, I don't know if the word is severe case of mm -hmm. uh, urine leakage. Mm -hmm. uh, Absolutely. Um, they are very, very helpful modalities that we got them recently. And um, I want to use this opportunity to inform all ladies because I'm sure we all have seen advertisement on TV. If you've been injured by this mesh or such and such, call us. So it's a common misconception, I want to say, that the meshes are not good. But in good trained hands, they really can change the quality of a woman's life. Uh, for higher degrees of leakage, if it's due to sagging of the bladder or the bladder neck, the best thing to do is a um, bladder sling to hold it up. We used to do that with stitches only. And in the best trained surgical hands, the dissolvable stitches would kind of dissolve and women were in square one within seven to ten days mm. with the best right you know back. exactly mm. but the mesh has is made of propylene and it's not dissolvable and it's made like fenestrated it has holes in it and the um, and the patient's connective tissue grows in between the um, the, whole, the pores in the mesh and it somehow intervenes and it makes such a, a strong support for the bladder that it's life lasting so in good trained hands it's really a good modality and I want women to talk about this to their doctors it's just like about um, saying that cars are not good yes in 2014 about 33,000 um, people died of car accidents but it doesn't mean that we shouldn't be driving we shouldn't go to driving classes same thing meshes if used in trained hands and uh, the cases the candidates are the right candidates it's really really helpful and it really changes the quality of life so bladder slings and mesh this is something that you personally do it in your practice i sure do okay Thank you, doctor. And if you want further information on women's health at Tri-City Medical Center, please visit tricitymed.org. Tri-City Medical Center, a leader in advanced health care close to home. When I first came to San Diego and needed a doctor, I found Dr. Ferber. That was 30 years ago. And since that day, Dr. Ferber has cared for Kathy, her husband, and their two children. Our family has followed Dr. Ferber just so that we could keep him as our doctor. He's so compassionate and up on the latest health issues and advanced technologies. Over time, they've dealt with some stressful medical concerns. I don't know how we'd have gotten through our health care issues if it weren't for Dr. Ferber and Tri-City Medical Center. It is my goal to empower patients and promote healthy living. It is an honor to be entrusted with their care. It's all about relationships. We are partners in their health. Dr. Ferber has always been so accessible. You always feel like you're his only patient. He just really cares. What I love most about my practice is that we become family. Tri-City Medical Center, advanced healthcare for you. 
Hello and welcome to What's Happening at Tri-City Medical Center. With us is Dr. Adib, a board certified OBGYN practicing at Tri-City Medical Center. She is here to talk about vaginal and facial rejuvenation. Welcome, Dr. Adib. Thank you, Kellyanne. <laughs> Thanks for having me here today. Oh, it's wonderful. Okay. Wondering if we could have both on the same day. What is this <laughs> vaginal and facial rejuvenation you do in your practice? I, what, what, how does a woman begin to ask for these things? I mean, yeah, that's a very good question. I mean, um, it's totally up to a woman to ask. I normally, after an annual exam, I ask them, is there anything else I can help you with? As you know, Kelly, the, um, the definition of health by WHO back in 1948 is a good state and healthy state mentally, physically, and socially. Mm -hmm. So when women come to me for our annual visit, I make sure that I address all the problems. And if I cannot address all their problems, I make sure I refer them to the right people who can address their problems. And one of them is how they feel about themselves about their age, about their looks, how is their self-esteem and what happened to them in life, in previous relationships or in their work, in workplace and you know, how they feel it might be related to their success in life. So definitely I asked them and I have um, actually, I, I believe there's a sign that if you uh, like to talk to your doctor about it, if you're interested, make sure you bring up. So I do it in my practice. I understand coming to your practice as a OBGYN doctor, why I would come and I'm going to just t put vaginal rejuvenation for aside just for one second, but I would never think to talk about facial rejuvenation mm -hmm. going to um, a gynecologist. Yeah, and now, is this just something specific that you personally do or? Have, have I been missing out? Should I have been asking my <laughs> gynecologist for some facial rejuvenation? Indeed, um, different type of doctors do the training okay. session as long as they're MD and even some dentists might have um, done these courses and they offer it. So, um, you know, just doing the training courses and having previous experience with that, um, any type of doctor who is interested in those sort of uh, treatments can offer them in their offices. So it doesn't hurt to, to ask. Exactly. Now, I understand facial rejuvenation, vaginal ju rejuvenation. What do you mean by that? What is that? Yeah. Well, after um, aging and also with multiple childbearing, um, the vagina may lose its strengths or its previous shape. Same, same thing with external genital organs like the labia and um, external parts. Um, they may get darker or change in shape or just imagine childbirth like uh, if you stretch a rubber band more than it's, it could tolerate and then when you release it, it will never go back to it's what it was before. Mm -hmm. So same thing happens to vagina. It doesn't bother some people, but it does bother, um, you know, certain group of people, or it may affect their sexual life. Mm -hmm. So what we can do in uh, these rejuvenation is to um, basically uh, construct the vagina and make it closer to what it was before these incidents. Um. So vaginal rejuvenation is not only, uh, it, it, it deals with actually the, the physical, some physical alterations to it, is that? Yes, uh, it okay. does. Facial though, it involves, involves mostly um, uh, injections. We can also do facelift, we'll, we'll get into that I believe uh, shortly. But um, in, in terms of facial rejuvenation, we wanna know what what stage the woman is at right now. Um, people who are very much into themselves, they prevent to begin with. We have 250 um, facial expression muscles and the more we use them, 
uh, the more the lines happens on our faces. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you mm -hmm. are aware of people or you know people who when they focus on things they just frown and it's their habit mm -hmm. and this habit makes them have two big lines over here mm -hmm. and they're not even 30 years old and they ma it makes them look angry or frustrated all the time which is not true really. Mm -hmm. So those type of things or preventative can be done by injections but when the lines are too deep or it's too long from when the lines has happened or their mm, women are too old then the injections may not work and really a facelift will be the best option so the best thing about rejuvenation is actually to do a consultation visit with the doctor and voice the concerns and uh, based on what stage they are at then the best treatment will be offered to them. And what, and what are some of the kinds of treatments uh, for facial rejuvenation, for example? Right, there are, uh, in the earlier stages, there are fillers available uh, to fill in like the deeper lines, like the smile lines mm -hmm. over here. They best are treated with fillers. The um, facial muscles that move, like the frown or like craw feet mm -hmm. or bunny lines, they are best better treated with um, Botox or Desport, so there are injections if the lines are not that deep. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And what are the kinds of treatments for vaginal rejuvenation? Yeah, there are certain treatments like laser uh, treatments and also um, doing actually a physical surgical procedure to tighten up the vagina or remove the darker parts. And when someone wants to come in for this, the particular process of the vaginal rejuvenation, is it because they've come to you and they're like, you know, I'm, I'm, things feel a little wonky down there and I'm not quite sure what it is. I, I, it's, how do they, I don't know if the word is get diagnosed, but how do they arrive mm -hmm. that it's not, it's, it's something that can be rejuvenated as opposed to some, uh, other kind of condition that might be more, um, mm, I don't want to say health oriented, mm -hmm. but how do you know the difference between getting rejuve yeah. <laughs> the rejuvenation or that it's something ser more serious that needs a medical attention? Right. Rejuvenation is actually not exactly a treatment. It's a matter of personal choice. So the patients are the best people who will judge or maybe their partners. Um, of course, if I see something that is totally off or like something that is health related, like um, a lot of sagging or a lot of loss of strength in the vagina, I'll mention to the patient because as I said, some of them is, are even embarrassed to say anything about it. Mm -hmm. But if they're fine with it, then we'll let them live with it. If they're not fine, then always can things, things can be done about it. And uh, before we go, I, is there any final words that you would like to give to your audience about uh, this topic of women's health and annual visits and rejuvenations and all that? Yes, I do. Um, I want to message all the yeah, women um, about taking care of themselves. Um, we. Um, normally give service to everyone and forget themselves. I see a lot of moms, working moms or single moms that they are used to give service all the time and they totally forget themselves. Mm -hmm. And I really like them to look again to their lifestyles and cherish their life, cherish their health um, and actually take care of themselves too because what will happen most of the time after they age a little bit and after they're done with whatever was their first priority, then they're left with depression, anxiety, empty nest syndrome. These conditions are about nine to 10 times more common in women than in men. And that's because we just, you know, give and we don't take mm -hmm. as much. So uh, my final words to all women on the planet is to cherish their health, their life, then think about their emotional well-being as well as their physical well-being and always, always ask their doctor if they need anything or if they feel anything is wrong. Thank you, Dr. Adib, for joining us. 
And if you are interested in finding out more information about women's health at Tri-City Medical Center, please visit tricitymed.org. Thank you for joining us on another episode of What's Happening at Tri-City Medical Center. To watch episodes, previous episodes that is, or other KOCT programming, visit our video on demand page at koct.org. We'll see you next time.